Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming out today and for this presentation on Luminar Neo, the tech demo. It's um, kind of like a pre-beta thing, it's just a few of the new features that are coming out in Skylum's Luminar Neo application that's going to be coming out. So let me get started on the presentation. Let me share my screen. So again, this is a slide presentation put together for the demo. And my name is David Crooks. I'm the organizer at the Virginia Beltway Photography Meetup Group. And also, we're talking about being an affiliate. I am an affiliate with Skylum Luminar. So I'd, if you do use one of the links that I do send out, usually uh, I get a portion of that sale. So I have to disclose that. So here's all the new features. So what is Luminar Neo? It's a creative image editor driven by AI technologies and empowers creators to bring their oldest ideas to life. This is all their <laughs> marketing. So that's what it does. How does Luminar fit in? So Luminar Neo is the newest AI based creative image editor. So we already had Luminar AI was the first AI-based image editor, and I've been using that. I use that practically daily when I'm editing my photos. You know, even though I'm a Lightroom person, I I just use that for the asset management, and then I go into so at some point to go into Luminar Neo to do some of the features that they have. They had Luminar four before that and three before that, but Luminar 4 is end of life at the end of this year. I was trying to get this confirmed with them, but in their, their slides, they were saying replace it with using Luminar Neo. So Luminar 4 had layers where Luminar AI did not have layers. And so Luminar Neo will have layers when it comes out. That's one of the big differences. And you can kind of think also compared it's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but it, so you have Photoshop that has layers, and then until recently, you had Lightroom, which did not have layers, and now it does, masking and all that. It has masking anyway, but it doesn't have the full layers like Photoshop does. So with Luminar, it's the same deal that Luminar Neo kind of compares to Photoshop and Luminar AI compared to Lightroom. So when will Luminar Neo be really released? So the early bird release was slated to the end of January and the main release at the end of January and the main release of Luminar Neo will be beginning of February 22. So I've got a couple months to, before it's released. So I'm sure we'll be coming up with more updates like this until it's fully re released. And there's, Skylum does have a full 30 day satisfaction guarantee. And that starts from the date of the official release. So if you're not happy with any reason, they'll give you money back, no, no questions asked. So what's in the tech demo? So there's three features that are coming out as the uh, AI, the, the new, all new, all new real light AI tool in Neo, you guys can read this. I'm not gonna <laughs> read the slides. I, I don't like when people read slides to me. I can read. <laughs> so that's just some of their some of the marketing that they gave me to pass on. So it's kind of a unique tool that it, it creates a 3D map of the photo and then you can spread the light in the foreground and the background in that 3D layer. So I'll give a demonstration of that. And then the other one is using dust spots. So it has a remove option race in the tool. And you can, one of the buttons now is to, to erase the dust spots. So if you have any dust spots in your sensor or on your lens, you can push a button and the tool will analyze your image and remove those automatically. And also there are power lines to be able to remove power lines with a click of a button. And 
So again, we'll give a demonstration of that, how that works. Any power lines and phone lines in the sky. And you don't have to drag across like you had to right now. You can kind of do that in Lightroom and Photoshop. It takes a little time. And so let's use, again, the AI engine analyzes the image and then removes the power lines or phone lines. Um, it won't remove the power, the, the phone pole or phone line pole, power line pole. I won't remove those, but so you have to doing that. And, but it's still kind of a safe, um, time saving things I'm trying to say. So, and let's get to the demo. I also want to thank Rob Trek. I was hoping he would be online. I guess he got busy. So he, I asked him yesterday if he could provide me some samples photos that would have some um, spots, sensor spots, and also any, some, some of the architectural stuff. He, he does, does real estate photography. And so I can show with his interiors how the, use, using some of the tools to help with those images as well. So thanks to Rob and I. Here's Luminar. Neo and it does have a standard catalog. And so you see how funny it comes pretty bare bones. And I can I played around with some of these files already. These top ones I took cover kind of Wingo Dam and some out west when excuse me. I'm going to a way to Bombay Hook. I've got this sunrise and had all these power lines. Looks like this is an after shot. So let me go into edit and I can reset. So there's before and after. And so again, to use the tool, just as all the, the tools on the right hand side to erase and it has a button to remove power lines. So I can click that. And I'm not supposed to talk too much about the, the speed and performance. This is a it's a tech demo, but it's supposed to be fairly fast. In my opinion. So I mean your mileage may vary. <laughs> So it looks like I got most of it. Kind of missed a couple. I did my testing. A couple of the images it was, seemed especially if it was kind of dark. I kind of missed some. I mean, I can you can clean it up. I can just highlight this and click erase, and it'll remove it pretty quickly. But you see, it got saved a lot of time on going through each one of those, and that was. There were a lot of power lines in this image. And I can just show you right away that I can remove dust spots if I have any. I don't think I really have any, but it'll go through the image and yeah, it didn't really change much. Oh, here's Rob. So let me keep going here. Wait for Rob to come on in, but I've already started the demo, Rob. So we can continue on. So this was an image I took at kind of with the dam, the <clears throat> power lines here. And click on edit. And again, click the erase and click remove power lines. And they're gone. Although one thing I did notice with this one, 
Let's see. There was some artifact and I did notice. So one of the things is that I think they need a, you know, this is a demo. I'm giving some feedback on it. I can see some artifact in the background there. So if I go out of here, I did notice, and I can show you to do the relight, that the brighter the image was, the better the, the results was. If it was a completely blank white sky, I don't think it would have any problem at all. But because it has some of the competing exposure darkening, I think it has a little more trouble with. So here's the relight tool. And you see you can do brightness near and far. And you can brighten, you see the light and the sets exposure closest at the front, at the bottom of the image. And then I can do the far of the image and it really brightens it up. And you can also warm it up, kind of add some warmth to the color to this photo and same with the uh, kind of helps with my sunrise and add some color to the sunrise and into the sky here. But let me see if I can go back to, I think I can reset or even try to remove power lines again, see if it does anything. No, it didn't. So if I think if I change the order around, put the, reset the power lines, go to relight and brighten it up. And just, you know, just focusing on this one feature. I don't want to do this in real life, but that's just demonstrating the tool that to remove the power lines, I think, do a little better job there. So that's, there's still, I'm still seeing a little artifacting. Again, I'll pass that on. So that's how that works. And, and this was another one that we took on, I took on Sunday. So it's got the power ones on the bottom. But again, it's pretty dark. And so I think when I first tried it in power lines, it like didn't do anything. Like it didn't even notice that there was a power line there. Yep. So again, I'll try to relight and I can brighten the image up with the relight tool and go 100% just for demonstration purposes. If you get any halo low in with the relight, you can fix that with that slider. Well, let's see what happens now when I go back and remove power lines. It did a more decent setup. Still has trouble and it's really dark. So again, you'd have to do that manually. So I think that's where we're at with that right now with those two of the power lines. Here's some of uh, Rob's, I can scroll down to some, show some of his other photos that he provided. Um, I think this one Rob submitted that had a dust spot here. Let me go and edit that. And just go to the race tool. Obviously, there's no power lines, but I can move dust spots. As it analyzes the engine, it, or Neo analyzes the photo, and it's gone. Dust spots re removed. 
And I kind of play with the relight while I'm here also. So I think mostly brighten up, see so what we can fix on the monument. This was a slider, so it's obviously changing the exposure. But it's just doing it based on where the building is. And you can control that by the depth of how much you're doing. It's kind of hard to tell how they're fixed, but it looks a lot better, just a couple of sliders. And let's try some other, I think this is another dust spot shot. Yeah, it's got a dust spot over here on the right. And then go to edit. And then move dust spots. And short time later, it's They'll be removed. There you go. So, let's go on to the next one. Let's see what else we got. Oops. Let me go to edit this one. This has some depth to it. We can kind of play with the real light. I don't, we can try and see if there's any dust spots. But I don't think there are. Maybe there are up here. Yeah, there's actually, Dave, I'm sorry. There's a lot no of dust spots on this image. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I can see them online here. Okay. I see five. There you go. Yeah, there, there's a lot. A lot of, there's the obvious ones. Yeah. <laughs> And now they should be gone. Did it work? Yeah. Cool. There you go. So that's part of the AI feature, you just push a button and you don't have to hunt through the whole sky to find these. I had to make sure it was, it was in my, my screen. <laughs> I was looking at my screen, make sure that wasn't the, the spots for. Yeah, it, it got rid of at least a you know, a couple of dozen small dust spots. Cool. Yeah, I can, if I get out of here, I can zoom out and zoom in. I can move around. This is 100%. Now, if you want me to reset it or you want, I think it would fit pretty good. Rob? Yeah, yeah. Um, all the, the images that have skies in them. Okay have dust spots all right <laughs> does and, does this uh tech demo have a like before after button Almost. yes it does yeah okay i think i hold down this but that's yeah. before right so there's if you look at it like a clock there's a bunch starting at 12 then one mm. then two then four <laughs> also at six o'clock and then over there at 11 o'clock, there's about four or five more dust spots in the far left corner. Yeah, I see um, it. And then there's a speckle of dust spots right around the upper right. Okay. And it, yeah, it just wiped all those out. And, and there's one right, yeah, it's, yeah, it wiped them all out. Cool. Very good. I can do some of the relight feature. See if I was bump up to 100 to see if it, what it does. There you go. <laughs> so as you see, just change the exposure to what's close. And I can also warm that up. And then let's see what happens if we go far. Get a little more even light, even. So this one is about the Luminar products. So it's just fun just to slide it, you know, change the sliders and see what happens. You can always reset it if it doesn't look right, but 
Yeah, it came up pretty cool. Any other questions about this image? I guess at this point you would it you would export it from this point if you want to correct the horizon and and do oh, any yeah. additional editing. Correct. Yeah, this is just a tech demo. It just has those essentially these three features. I don't. I can't even export anything in this version. Most of the menu stuffs in here. You see, it doesn't have a whole lot to. Right. To do. Even though like the adjustments and I can trash it, or set a flag. David, how would you uh, relight the, it's got near and far, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, right and it's far, but what about, and depth, but what about the middle? Like in that trench, in the middle of the trench, in the middle, yeah, right in there, yeah. How would you lighten up that? The depth? Right. Something that's missing there is in the features is the mm. if if this makes sense the width of the depth. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's crank up to a hundred. I guess if I crank up the depth to a hundred, that lightened it up. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, something that's... with the slides sliders. You can just crank it up to a hundred, and I mean, it's not probably what you do in real life, but. I can really blow out the sky like that. Yeah, the whole trench that. from near to far is now pretty evenly lit. It's yeah. a little dark, but it's at right. least even. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Sure. All right. We'll go to another image. This one. Uh, think... There we go. Neo is going to support a lot of really good masking. Mm -hmm. and so I think, you know, this tech demo has just got the three features, true. but when it actually comes out with the masking, it's supposed to be able to use AI to select objects. Right. And so you would, you would, you could select an object and then with that object, you could light it independently. Yeah, that is a good point. Sounds good. Yeah, now this image, you can see more dust spots because the water is clear. Okay, yeah. But there's three or four more yet. Just clean them all up. Yep, that's all. It didn't take that long. So, yeah. Yeah, they were in the same space as the other picture. The same it's probably, probably the same one, same camera. Yeah, yeah same right. camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Nikon, my Nikon's always got dust spots on them. Cool. Not as cool as your spots, but at least the tool seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. Where was that image taken? Uh, that was um, Fort Washington. Nice. Cool. Let's check it. It's kind of going backwards through your, through your images. There we go. Yeah, see, like in this shot, you can see the dust spots all over the sky, but not in the water because the water is, you know, kind of ripply. They're all in the same spot as that other, same place as that other image, too. Yeah, but you can see more of them now because there's more sky. Yeah. I mean, that, that was a dirty sensor. <laughs> It's analyzing. There we go. Yeah, you got them all. One thing I wanted to do when they're talking about it on the webinars, I was like, I hope it doesn't get rid of my stars. We can do like a Milky Way shot. You got all the thousands of stars to try that with a dust remover. It doesn't get rid of a star versus compared to a dust spot. And yeah, I don't know the see difference. Why it would. Yeah, I can send you a starry picture if you want to try one. <laughs> yep, yeah, you can do that. Um, David, on sure. if I could trouble you, would, if, would you no go problem. back to that um, and turn off the edit? Because I, 
I think I'm seeing banding, horizontal banding on it. Like and this one? Yeah. No, I guess it's there. Maybe it's my monitor or something because I see it even in the before. So Yeah, I see it too. Yeah. Horizontal lines. In the yeah, style. yeah. I, I see the banding, but that's not in the original image. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that's just zoom. Yeah, compressing the image. Right. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, any feedback like that is helpful. Okay. There's another one with the Nikon. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the spot there. That's that's nice lighting, just the way mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. yeah, these are these images are probably six or seven years old. Hmm. I think this is the Leesylvania State Park, the bridge. I is think. It? Okay. No, it look no, it's not. No, it's, it looks totally bigger. different. Yes. Yeah, no, it's way bigger. Way bigger. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember where this was. It was definitely a Virginia Park. I'm pretty sure of that, but I mm. can't remember which one. You can just relight just the back. <laughs> See where the line is. Okay. Yeah, I've got the same spots. No power lines. <clears throat> I'll be curious to see if it gets rid of the spots in the water. Hmm. Talk about in this area. No, no, a little bit higher. Okay. Right in the center. Yep. That spot there is gone. And there was okay. one on the left too. But yeah, they're all gone. Cool. Yep, nice shot. Yeah, interesting. It didn't, it didn't uh can you do a before and after on that one? Sure. So I wanted to see if it if it removed any of the the flaring spots. Looks like I have to do it again. <clears throat> yeah. Like I said, it doesn't really save too much. The image changes. It thinks about it. Yeah, it seems like the removing process is taking longer on this one, the dust spots. I wonder why. Maybe more area that's a solid, pretty much a solid color. Right. Yeah. Okay. It didn't. It didn't touch the flaring at all. I still see this tiny green spots here and there. It's before and after. Yeah. Before, and after. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty clean. Cool. Yeah, on the AI, they had a slider. You could slide it back and forth. It should be before and after, but this one just has the button. I can zoom in also. Take it off here and then zoom in. You can move it around. I do have a mouse here, maybe. I want to sleep. Okay. It looks good. I'm gonna try some of the interiors. Yeah, these um you had asked for some bedroom type pictures. Right. So um these 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 should not have any spots in it. It's my Olympus. 
Right, okay. So it's more for the relight when it turns in a straight view. I could enhance the exposure and kind of crank that to 100. Didn't change too much. There we go. I had to think about it a little bit. If you see up in, in the upper left hand corner where it says Luminar Neo, it's, it's thinking when the color changes through that. Those words. Uh, they should they should simplify that. It's taking computing power. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if it's going to keep going or if it's going to stop. Let me try the far. And then just exaggerating. So going. Uh, you can also darken it, kind of do your HDR right here for windows. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. You can brighten up the bed and then darken the rest of the room. Right, yep. And then you can also add some color. It's probably add some more. I don't want to want it. Jeez. Yeah, that looks more natural. Yep. Because that light is so warm. You can mm -hmm. warm up the bed. Yeah, it had a touch to it. I don't wouldn't want it too much, but don't want to go extreme. <laughs> like yellow sheets, but just a touch of it. sunlight. I also do the background, kind of blow out, make it look like fall outside. Yep. <laughs> cool. I think, you know, anything else about this one? We got others to go through. Yeah, this is a tough one. Yeah, you're really blowing out the light there. This should help with the, around the bed area. Maybe even darken the background a little bit. Yeah, see if you can cool off the background. I think, yeah, well, it's warm. I'm just extreme. Yeah. And yeah, now the white balance is a little more balanced. By okay. the back. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, add a little bit of warmth. Obviously, we're going too far. Well, <laughs> gonna go too far this way. Kind of helps with the windows. So, when the finish, the, the finished product will have mm -hmm. uh, masking, so that you could uh, uh, mask those highlights. Right. I mean, those 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 blown out. Uh, lights in the, from the window and, and mm -hmm. darken just those? I believe so. I honestly haven't seen the, what, what it's able to do, but okay. I'm sure you should be able to do something like that. I was kind of... What is, thinking, go ahead. Sorry, at the bottom next to where you have the uh, before and after eyeball mm -hmm. icon, then percentage, then action. What's under the actions menu? The action is just reset. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, that's just the display image, right? Yeah. So it really shouldn't be plural. It just should be action. Right? Should, yeah. <laughs> I think or it's not. part of it. Yeah, it's part of it. <laughs> it before and after. Yeah, that's pretty dramatic. Yeah. I was kind of wondering, does a race tool, Let's see if I can do that just for giggles. There you go. <laughs> the race tool yeah. works pretty well. I mean, it's so yeah, you can put up little spots and you can, right, right, like up here, you can like those lines, Just clean that up. 
Yeah. It's not always perfect. So I've had sometimes, you know, if it's really messy for the race works a lot of times, probably works good 80, 90% of the time. Sometimes I got to go and still go on Photoshop and use the content aware and, and the clone tool. But the AI does have the clone tool as well. So, can you erase that TV or is that just way too big of an image to try to do it? I can try it. <laughs> I'm not. I can try it. Let's see if I can do it. Did I get it? I think so. Took a little bit. There you go. It's gone. Wow. Yeah, nice. Wow. So, yeah, that came out pretty clean, actually. Yeah, what's that other thing up there where the, over top the TV? Get rid of that, too. I've got a bar in front of mine, so it's I can't get rid of this. I can figure out how to get rid of this menu bar. Ah. There we go. Now, now I can see what's going on. I was having trouble finding. It'll just won't do anything. There you go. All right, now add in uh, Linda Carter there <laughs> in the bed. <laughs> uh, not in this version. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe the final version will have it. <laughs> they, they do have that, uh, you know, ar add in artificial items is one right. of the big things. So you can yeah. add dinosaurs and balloons and you yeah. know, skyscrapers. Yeah. Yeah, we did play with that with the women or AI stuff. We could add giraffes and hide our balloons and yeah. Or add a UFO for my uh, landscape images. Right. Yeah, that's better. That's part. Okay. We did that one. Let's go to this one. This is fairly well lit. Yeah, that race tool would probably do a pretty good job on those. And a reflection on the floor, too. Yeah. In front. Yeah, that's going to bother me. That other image that really blows out, let's darken it up a little bit, even at the light. And go back the other way as well, nearby. How does that look, Rob? Uh, yeah, it's more even. Yeah. It's, um, it's darker than I would deliver to a client. But yeah, yeah no. It's, uh, yeah. Some of it's just doing the extreme just to show. Right, right. It's doing, but. Yeah, it did even everything out. Probably more like that. Again, you can darken. Not warm it, warm it. <laughs> Too warm. Yeah, the erase tool will take care of this stuff. Yeah, doing erasing things on textured items like that is is pretty tough. Is it gonna work for me? I need to be in select, isn't it? There we go. It was working. There we go. It's not a perfect job, but yeah, it's not perfect. Let's see. Cool. Boards are off kilter. Cool. Okay. Try try the um. See where it says "live, laugh, love." Okay. Just erase the laugh in the middle. Like that? Yeah. I don't want any laughing while I'm loving. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. No, but sometimes I have to brush things out like that. Sure. In, sure. Uh, in the property video or properties. Mm -hmm. Because they usually it's branding type stuff. They don't want people to know the name of the business. Okay. And they ask me to brush out any, any branding in the building. Mm-hmm. 
Makes sense. So that's a common thing that I do. Yeah, obviously I didn't spend much time on it. I probably should have made the brush a little smaller. One of the other yeah, tips, yeah. tips was be to, um, when you do a lot, if you want to do so much um, actual removing of the parts of the image using this erase tool, is to do it a little bit at a time. If you try to do a home, I mean, we did pretty well with that TV, but sometimes you got to do a little bit at a time and because it'll you know analyze everything around it. And so sometimes it's just you know, piece by piece and that's a better way of getting better results. Yeah, like that ceiling would be super simple because there's no there's no uh, geometry in it. It's just a flat, plain mm -hmm. surface. Right. It's pretty interesting the way that it's like the light switch is right there. Yeah. I, I delivered you the raw images. This is not what I delivered to a client. Okay. Yeah, no, I just so you know. <laughs> sure. You know, I, I'd never deliver blown out windows and no. lights. No, I know. It makes sense. Now, what's tough on this image here, actually, um, is right in the center where the mirror is <clears> reflecting, <throat> there's a purple flaring from that lens. Over in this area? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's where I think you could use a really small brush and go around the mirror and then a larger brush for the rest mm -hmm. when you do an erase. Bring it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's what I did in Photoshop anyway. Right. Look through the erase tool, your brush radius. Keep it kind of small. Yeah, I'm not seeing it selecting anything. Yeah, I don't know why it's not selecting either. Click the select there. button. Oh, just Take, you needed a minute, I guess. Yep. Tech demo. It is. <laughs> Probably need it's probably a whole circle here, right? Yeah. That's a shadow from the mirror. Yeah, this it, this was yeah. a very common problem with this lens, that purple flaring. Right. Yeah. Again, probably could spin probably should have broken down a little Yeah. Some, some of, of these some of these work better with just cloning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this tech demo doesn't have the clone tool, but that probably would be better. What do you think causes that purple flurry? It's it's just it's just poor coating on the lenses. So what's happening is is the lights, the light, <clears throat> the the light from the window is shining onto the lens. And the coatings inside the lens, and there's multiple lenses inside a single lens, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's 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 the light bouncing off the lenses internally, and the coatings on the lens have a purple tint to them, I guess. Oh. Yeah. So um, yeah. So some you know some better lenses wouldn't do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Spend more money. <laughs> yeah. But this was the cheapest wide angle lens I could buy. It's the Panasonic 7 to 14. And I bought it used for like 600 bucks. It's normally a thousand, mm. like brand new. Okay. Any questions about this image? Move on to the next one. We've got you had several. Let's go check out this one. This one's pretty bright. It's going to go the opposite way of 
one in down. There we go. Not even getting that so warm. Maybe a little bit warm. How does that look? Here are the spots in this. That's 100% or 94%. There's a hundred. And just for yeah. demo purposes, blows it out 100%. And go almost minus 100. Actually, I noticed this in the previous one, those, those dark spots in the overhead fixture, mm -hmm. those are screws, right? Screws in the fixture, but I wonder. Yeah. If the, I wonder if the That's dust it. removed. <laughs> Let's try it. You can try that. See if it oh, thinks it's, think, it's thinking real hard about that one. Yep. No. No. That's it's good. Not, yeah, yeah, it knows they're not dust. That's dust amazing. spots. Dust spots tend to have diffuse boundaries, and mm -hmm. those do not. So it right. left them alone. Yep. Cool. That's very cool. You get hit it with a brush, then get rid of it, right? It could. Yeah. Yep. Seems to be a little lagging on doing the selection. There it is. There they go. <laughs> yeah. That's my screen. Yeah, that was on my screen. Well, it's back up there. There's before and after. I always see those screws when it's so bright. Anything else about this image? And that will keep going. Let's see if we got, yeah, we're almost there. I think we got about 20 images we're going through today. So relighting, kind of brighten up the near part. I almost want to darken up the back a little bit. The windows seem pretty good exposure. How's that look? Yeah, it looks good. One of the Skyrim things is make sure you have fun with this. What's that fun with the, your editing? Should be a chore to go through, making sure all the lights the same way and where you did those spots. Um, now we got an exit sign we can play with. <laughs> I think everything's pretty bright, so I'm gonna have to go negative on just a touch. Actually got some people back there too. I'm gonna to go too far. How's that look? Yeah. A little bit cooler. 
you want to make it core? Or? Yeah, the white balance. We can do that. It's a little more industrial. Then with the home. I think that looks better. Yeah, that's, that's this about wall. right. Yeah. This wall back here before was so brought, blown out. Let's see if we can get rid of the exit sign. So what if that happens? There's two of them. There's there's one on the left on yeah, the wall. way back here. Right. I'm not sure why it's lagging. It's just. It seemed like the one time when you hit the select button again, it, it caught up right away. Right. Yeah, it's still thinking. There it is. Let's see what happened there? Yeah, not perfect. It'd probably be better to zoom in. And take it off, erase, zoom in back here. Oh, there's an, an, another exit sign or something. There are a couple, yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that before. Not that anyone's going to really look at their image this close all the time, especially in real estate. Let's see if I can figure out the people. Now let's draw on it. Let me start with her, that person. Yeah. Wow. Um, again, it's. Don't want to get that door. Let's try that. Probably, yeah. It's not perfect. <laughs> it's pretty tough though. Um, that would be so far back in the frame, nobody would notice. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think you said what, what size are your images? Like two megapixels? And oh, the final image? Yeah. <laughs> final images are two megapixels. Yep. Yeah. From a distance, at least you can't tell that there were people there. And got rid of the exit signs. Yeah, actually, in the final image, I cropped all of that out. Mm -hmm. Before and after. All right. I think, do we go through? We didn't, I think these are the last three that Rob submitted. So we can brighten up the foreground. I'll just go crank it up. And some of the background too. Although for the windows, you gotta I kinda go the other way. Gotta get some balance here, it's a little tough. I just want to show you, Robbie did a lot of HDR in the, those windows. Oh, no, actually, I just used Flash. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's your dynamic range from the brightness to the darks. Is... Uh, you crank up. Don't go too far in that. It changes all the White cabin is the warmer color. Yeah, the cabinets were white. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it that way. I'm sure. All right. I 
That's where I got, I guess you get two images. Looks like one was cleaned up compared to this, the lighting. Let me, uh, mm -hmm. let me just share a screen of my final image. I, I need to save face here a little bit. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> You're all right. Let's see. And I think we just got a couple of images left. But you ready to share it or? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, let me turn my camera on. That. That's the actual image I delivered to the client. It's in this scene. That was the kitchen. I, we don't, we're not seeing. Oh, you're not seeing it? No. What do you see? Do you... I just see, still see my screen. I'm not seeing yours. Did you click new share? You'd have to expand oh. my, my thumbnail. Okay. Oh, oh, you have to do share. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Share screen. Yeah. And I didn't let you. There we go. Participants. There you go. Now I'm sharing. Sorry. No problem. So, yeah, that's your final image. Yeah, that's the actual final image delivered. Right. So you can see the cabinets were kind of an off white. Mm -hmm. And then I brought the windows in and all that. Right. What lens did you use for that? Uh, I think I use that the same seven to fourteen lens. Um, I actually used the eight millimeter lens for real estate. Also, I did, I did, but I went back to the seven to fourteen. Yeah, okay. Um, that one I used. Yeah, I used the uh, Panasonic seven to fourteen lens. Yep. Confirm. I'm just checking Lightroom. I right. guess you guys can see that, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, right here. Yep. But that is, you know, you don't just edit one picture, right? You have to, uh, you have to take several pictures like this. So this is a HDR bracket mm -hmm. with flash. And then you go into Photoshop and uh, then you blend them together. And I do a lot of brushing, you know, it takes some time. <laughs> it takes a little time. I mean, I can get each picture done in about two minutes now because I do it all the time. But yeah, there's there's a pretty steep learning curve to kind of getting it to to look like that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, trying to figure out how do I stop sharing? There's a button there's, here. Yeah, there should be a red button. There it is. There you Got go. it. <laughs> Okay. I think we're pretty much done. I mean, that was one of the last images. They both look, look pretty much the same. So, anybody have any questions? I can go back to my. Yeah, you, you guys were talking about this is a demo, mm -hmm. a tech demo versus, uh, I think. Uh, Mike, I can't remember who was saying that the, there's another version. I'm, I'm a little confused what we're looking at. Um, if, you, if you go on the Luminar site and you just look at their blurb about what all Neo is going to do, they've got a lot of additional detail on like, oh, it's going to detect objects in your scene and you'll be able to mask them automatically. I mean, go, go to the Luminar site and kind of read, read what all they're pitching. Yep. Okay. Because you were saying earlier, this was on sale or something now for like forty nine ninety five or something, right? Yeah, it was in the thirties before too when it first came out. So it's gonna, that's yeah. the lowest it's ever going to be. It's, I think the final retail price. I'm hoping to. I think it's going to be around hundred bucks. So when it's released in February, end of February, beginning of February, excuse me. If you did the pre order. It's end of January. And so this was the slides that you missed, Rob. But then, and I thank you for the providing samples. Mm -hmm. So and then Q and A. So.
So any other questions? No, I think I'll check it out. I, yeah. um, I read a review where, you know, one of the complaints we've had as owners of Luminar software is that they keep selling us a new, sure. a new, a new thing. Right. Um, somebody commented or that maybe it was, I don't know, a, a YouTuber or something about they're sort of building from the ground up again and again. Mm -hmm. So when you look at, you know, Luminar AI, they kind of built from the ground up. They didn't just tweak, you know, Luminar 4. Right. And they're doing it again with Neo. So they're, they're, they're you know, if you, if you have a really mature product like Photoshop, mm -hmm. um, they're just doing very incremental updates. Although the, the mask update for Photoshop is not incremental. It's, it's apparently really cool. Right. But um, Luminar right now, they're still kind of getting, you know, trying to get it right. Mm -hmm. and, and they're willing to go in and just build a product from the ground up. Right. And that's what we've seen between, you know, 2018 and Luminar 3 and Luminar 4. And right. <laughs> yep. Like, you own the product forever. Them. It's like, well, they don't ever update an old product. <laughs> no, it's like, for the Luminar 4, like I said, that's end of life. They're not going to, and I was kind of wondering about the gap between it's the end of the year for Luminar 4 and then for the Neo doesn't come out and they tell you to upgrade to Neo, but Neo is not going to come out until February. So what are you supposed to do in January? <laughs> yes, you're still using four, and it doesn't. It's not going to stop working, just because they have they stopped updating it, supporting it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, that that spot removal is kind of nice to have. Right. Uh, but I I kind of like the relighting where it's it's, it's mm -hmm. analyzing the scene and and separating what's close and what's far away. Right. Uh, and that to me could be very useful, even, you know, for what I do. Right. In, in relighting the scene intelligently. Did you because, see, Rob, did you, did you miss the part about the power lines? Uh, no, I caught, I caught the tail end of you uh, okay. showing a few demos. Okay. Of that. Right. And, I don't know why I lost. I lost Your my uh, video. Yeah, I, lo I was. I went to the Neo site just to see because I'm. I still don't. I, I have to know how it's going to export those images. Yeah, I mean, you can use it as a plugin. That's what I use with Lightroom as a plugin. I'm sure it'll probably you know, just create a TIFF TIFF file and use right. a plugin or right, as a standalone. And there, there's also an um, image share. I haven't really gotten up to speed with that. There's an, another app to be able to share them out to different uh, the social media sites. So, I wonder I whether these technologies could be applied or these features mm -hmm. tools could be applied to video. We remove power lines from a video. Oh. You yeah, that'd be a little tough. A by, you might have to do frame, frame, frame by frame, frame, which would take forever. Right. You, might, you might you might up the cost by a you yeah. know add a few zeros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to that and your hardware. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's the button. Sorry. I lost I lost my entire zoom window. Cool. Now I see it. Okay. I seem to remember um, the folks at Luminar, I forget where I was reading it, but initially um, Neo is not going to be a Photoshop plugin initially, and then they're going to come along later and add support for that mm -hmm. so that you'd be able to, to, you know, have it as a plugin and go, you know, do your relight or whatever, and then bring it back in. Right. Um, so in the meantime, you kind of have to edit it and then export it as a TIFF and then mm -hmm. pull the TIFF in. Yeah, because the, the relighting, the way I do it now, because I do have to do that time to time is, you know, I'll just do a gradient mask and then erase out parts of the mask, uh, you know, visually, right? Yep. But if, if Neo can relight, and it did a good job with those bedrooms, it relit just the front part of the image mm -hmm. uh, nicely. And that would, um, 
that could be very handy because even even in shots where I use flash and things, you know, flash has a, a range and unevenly lights the scene sometimes because the room is just too large. And I had to I had to do gradient masks and brush out, you know, certain parts uh, just to make the scene evenly lit, you know, front to back. Right. So if it if it was a Lightroom plugin or something or a Photoshop plugin, mm -hmm. that would simplify the workflow overall because it 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 would it would just add one more you know if it's not a plugin and I have to edit every in, image individually before going into Photoshop, you know that's going to add a workflow problem right. <laughs> for me. Whereas, you know, Lightroom and Photoshop are integrated. Yeah. And, you know, the, the workflow is very, very smooth when I'm doing that kind of editing. Mm -hmm. So that, that needs to come out sooner than later. Right. Question is, do I, do I risk, you know, 50 bucks to wait? <laughs> wait for that or not? Right. Uh, and there has also been a question of doing the, doing, to, to, to migrate the files from if you have Luminar 4, catalogs and that and they do say that out of the box or so, sometimes soon after they will be able to migrate from 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 the luminar 4 and to and ai into neo they're gonna they're, they said they're gonna support that pretty soon it's like a, yeah as soon as possible coming out right but you would need the latest luminar i would assume Right, yeah, it's going to have, have that migration tool within yeah. that. And, you know, my, my theory is, and I, I think I've shared this with Dave before, is Luminar, uh, like, like Mike was saying, building from the ground up mm -hmm. every app yeah. is, to me, I feel like they're, they're building these apps to see what sticks and then try and sell it to Adobe. <laughs> and then Adobe will just incorporate it into their right. own Photoshop and stuff. Yeah, you, there really is an AI arms race going on right now between like Photoshop and Luminar and, yeah, and uh, DxO Labs. Yeah, because um, Photoshop pass, is probably, right. Yeah, Photoshop is is going to be adding their own uh, denoise AI. Yeah. Uh, you know, among other things, right? But sure. yeah, they already have yeah, the good thing, AI stuff tools right now. Yeah, but the good thing is these smaller companies can develop much quicker and and introduce, you know, innovation and ideas to the market and, and in a much faster rate. Mm -hmm. and, and people like me are fun, uh, funding a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are involved. Yeah, I've been, I've been paying that fee too. It's seems like almost yearly, but... Yeah, I've been, I've been using uh, the DxO Labs as my my beginning of my workflow now because I really like their optics module yeah. and their deep prime denoise. Great. And so I just pull things in and I run it through a couple of steps like that, a little bit of their lighting, and then I can export it as a DNG. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I do is when I bring a, a you know when I put the when I load all the photos, I load them in Lightroom and then I go to uh, DXO and just apply a preset that I made for denoising and optics and uh, some lighting. I export all of those as DNG. And those are the photos I end up using to edit in Lightroom and Photoshop mm -hmm. when I do my, and, and the, the, end, the end result is much better than I could do with Lightroom and Photoshop alone. Right. So that's why I'm thinking if I have to add another step like Neo, to adjust the lighting, um, I'd, I'd have to have, yeah, I'd have to think that through. How that fits into that workflow. Yeah, it's sort of yeah. the uh, living on the cutting edge where, you know, the, the getting piecemeal, piecemeal from this, this tool or this tool or this tool. Yeah, and then you're right. Eventually these things will, will they'll end up I don't know. And, and by the time they end up in Photoshop, Luminar and Topaz and DxO Labs will have some other new thing, right? Right. 
Yeah, like putting Linda Carter in the bed or <laughs> something. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. You know, just, just deleting dust spots and power lines quickly like that. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, you know, power lines are a pain in the butt uh, to, to remove, you know, and I, I'm... I don't normally have power line issues in my photos and tech, you know, for my personal stuff, it's yeah, that, you know, you got to watch out, but for, for my professional work, you know, I can't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be allowed to remove power lines out of the photos. Right. Um, It's part of the buildings. Advertising the view out the window (laughs) from the building. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't look like that that in the promotional. (laughs) Right, right. I mean, it, it would have to be, yeah, it, it would be a little bit of a misrepresentation, you know. I mean, I, I hesitate even when the grass is kind of brown and I make it a little bit greener. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I can get away with that, I think. Sure. Maybe sky replacement, but yeah, full on, full on removing power lines. Uh, that's that's kind of pushing it. <laughs> And there is that that real tension in photography. We've we've done some online sessions, and you have people are like, you know, my images. I hardly touch anything that came out of the camera. I'm trying to just show you exactly what's there, and I'm like, you know, I'm an artist. Mm. I'm creating my art by by starting with the photograph, and then I'm integrating my own stuff into it. Um, and okay. I, I, I have to beware because my photos sometimes end up really, you know, crunchy and overdone. Mm-hmm. Aunt Nancy helps me kind of do back up. That's a little overdone, don't you think? <laughs> hey, dear. <laughs> yeah, according to who? I like my dishes salty, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, Somebody was also talking about how, if you're actually cheating, talk about, is this really cheating? It's like, no, this is my art. I can, if I have the, if I have the right tools, I can make my why should I spend more time with you know just leaving with power lines in it and taking the power lines and make the image better and yeah I have a tool I to think that. There's, there's a spectrum between photojournalism and abstract art yeah right yeah the one yeah. into the like, other like you were saying Dave earlier on it's just about having fun and doing what you enjoy mm-hmm. you know who cares what other people think right yeah yeah I mean, I have certain obligations for professional work sure. and then that, but then, you know, for my personal stuff, you know, I'll throw an art filter on. I don't care. Right. <laughs> I think it looks good. It looks good to me. It's fine. Yeah. The, uh, the state fair used to have a rule that you couldn't use any Photoshop mm. uh, unless the category was Photoshop. And they changed the rule because there's so much processing that goes on inside the camera now right that it created an unfair advantage for people who had the high-end cameras as Mm. opposed to the people with the less expensive cameras and now they're sort of like okay you can do photoshopping but it you know if the judges like if if you're in a non-photoshop category and it looks like you really did a lot of extra processing they they might disqualify or or just you know you you won't win the uh the just kicked out yeah yeah Mm. So that's that's why I have to be extra crunchy for my fair entries. <laughs> yeah. Or not be crunchy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey Dave, I have a question on, on right. an unrelated topic. You said that TPE had a Black Friday sale. Yeah, I'm not sure if that actually happened this year or not. We can it usually does happen. You can just check their website. We'll probably are, okay. Yeah, it could be every Monday. Yeah, was, just, was that was that just on the um because I, I think their app, they're only currently doing their app for uh, Apple. Right. It could um, be because that's, that's one of the $10. I think when yeah. I bought it, I, got, I think they include a couple other apps in, in, as well, It's like which I haven't really used. Yeah, I bought the Android app years and years and years ago, but they're not selling it anymore. Hmm. And I just looked on their um their desktop version and they've got a pro level but i didn't see any discount for it so yeah i thought i did see something about their pro level being discounted for the desktop 
but yeah, check the website. Okay, thanks. Sure. Any other questions? Not me. Thanks, Dave. Thanks you. Thank you for coming. And we'll All right. stop the recording. And see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.